Hello friends, welcome back to AIA PGT and UPSC revision series by Friend of Health. So today in this episode, we are going to see the third part of genetic disorders series. That is the fifth episode of revision series and we have already completed two episodes that is 20 genetic disorders which are there in uh, different systems or different subjects maybe pediatrics, practice of medicine, surgery, obstetrics and gynecology. So uh, various genetic disorders which are scattered over uh, various uh, subjects we have compiled and we are making this uh, genetic disorders series in this revision series by Friend of Health. So if you have not watched the first two parts please do watch because they are very important and as we have already mentioned in the earlier videos in every question paper may it be AEA PGT or UPSC homeopathy competitive examinations you can find a genetic disorders uh, question and also in other examinations in the uh, medical field uh, everywhere these genetic disorders are very important that's why we are doing this uh, and we will go on to the uh, next uh, 10 more uh, like diseases as these are very important we are not going to skip any of the disease one more video will come as the last and final part the part 4 so that we will cover around 40 genetic disorders uh, which are very very important and uh, one question you, you can expect from this before going to today's uh, 10 uh, genetic disorders we will see one MCQ based on uh, one of the disease mentioned in this video in maple syrup urine disease, the amino acids excreted in the urine are leucine, isoleucine, valine, all of the above. So the answer you will get uh, in the end of this video because we will deal about this maple syrup urine disease, its pathogenesis, uh, clinical features and uh, cardinal features. So uh, we will go on to the diseases. First one is albinism. and we will see the pathogenesis or heredity, autosomal recessive disease it is. So albinism is an autosomal recessive disease. What happens here is tyrosinase deficiency. So there is a deficiency in the tyrosinase and it will lead to inability to synthesize melanin from tyrosine. So this is the pathogenesis happens in albinism. So tyrosinase deficiency, inability to synthesize melanin from tyrosine and that can result from a lack of migration of neural crust cells. So a lack of uh, migration of neural crust cells. Albinism. So albinism is a very very important uh, disease. Uh, you have to know the pathogenesis. What happens here. So I have already mentioned in the previous videos. In UPSC you need to know everything uh, behind the disease condition. Not just some high yield points. You should know the concept behind the albinism. Nowadays, uh, AIA PGT is also giving questions in that level. So you should know this very thoroughly. We will see the cardinal features and uh, the pathology. Uh, depigmentation, pink eyes, increased risk of skin cancer. These are the important features in albinism. So increased risk of skin cancer will be there. Pink eyes, depigmentation. So if at all a case uh, a scenario is given in front of you, uh, deep pigmentation, pink eyes and uh, the doctor is suggesting increased risk of skin cancer and uh, the tyrosine is deficiency you can go for the option albinism and we will see the next one the second uh, condition homocystinuria so homocystinuria pathogenesis or heredity if you see autosomal recessive again it is an autosomal recessive condition what happens here is cystathione synthase defect and either deficiency or lost affinity for pyridoxine vitamin B6 this is the uh, like essence or the core of this disease hereditary that pathogenesis features we have to know homocystinuria cystathione synthase defect and either the deficiency or lost affinity for pyridoxine vitamin B6 and what happens here is it will lead to building up of homocysteine and deficiency of cysteine so build up of homocysteine and deficiency of cysteine happens here. So cystathione synthase defect is the important point and you have to know that homocysteinuria is related with vitamin B6 and these are the things uh, so homocysteine and deficiency of cysteine and homocystinuria cardinal symptoms you see uh, like the pathology mental retardation 
Ectopia lentis. This is very very important. Ectopia lentis, sparse blonde hair, genu valgum, failure to thrive, thromboembolic episodes, fatty changes of liver. So these are the cardinal symptoms. So you know that uh, the features of uh, homocystinuria are mental retardation, ectopia lentis, sparse blonde hair, genu valgum, failure to thrive, thromboembolic episodes, fatty changes of liver. Next one is very very important PKU or phenylketonuria. Phenylketonuria you have to understand it thoroughly because it is going to be a question because it is very very important in the genetic disorders itself there are some conditions which are very favorite for the examiners because they repeat it in many question papers so phenylketonuria you can see in many question papers it's an autosomal recessive condition and what happens is phenylalanine hydroxylase deficiency so here what happens are the deficiency is of phenylalanine and what happens is it cannot break down in this condition we cannot break down phenylalanine nor make tyrosine so these are this is the main uh, problem happens here the defect uh, the pathogenesis is behind this so it cannot make uh, tyrosine and it cannot break down phenylalanine because uh, of the deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase and it leads to building up of phenylalanine phenyl ketones that are phenyl acetate phenyl lactate and phenyl pyruvate in the body tissues and cns so we'll see the cardinal symptoms uh, or the pathology behind this symptoms result from accumulation of phenylalanine itself and mental deterioration hyperpigmentation blonde hair and blue eyes mousy body odor from phenylacetic acid in urine and sweat so this is the very very repeatedly asked feature of phenylketonuria mousy body odor so that happens from the phenylacetic acid in urine and sweat so hypopigmentation mousy body odor mental deterioration so these are the things and we'll see the third one glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency G6PD deficiency very very important topic again glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogen it is an X-linked recessive X-linked recessive disease so these things are very important and glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase uh, G6PD deficiency is there and what happens is no hexose monophosphate shunt happens here so it uh, will lead to the uh, problem uh, or defect in the hexose, mon hexose monophosphate shunt and deficiency in NAP, uh, NADPH and inability to maintain glutathione in reduced form in RBCs. So this is a very very important disease among the RBC disorders. So inability to maintain glutathione in reduced form and uh, that is uh, mainly because of the deficiency in NADPH and uh, the defect in uh, hexose monophosphate shunt due to the deficiency of uh, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. And these things we will understand once you once you are thorough about the biochemistry, the normal biochemistry, and you correlate this genetic disorders knowledge or the pathology knowledge, you will understand things much better. So this is a very very important G6 PD deficiency, and you can see the cardinal symptoms like susceptibility to oxidative damage to RBCs, leading to hemolytic anemia. So the presentation of G6 PD deficiency is hemolytic anemia because uh, there will be oxidative damage to RBC and more prevalent in blacks so these things are very very important we may not notice uh, the importance of this kind of lines like more prevalent in which age group or which ethnic group because these things will come in MCQ as uh, uh, mostly they will give the reverse of this to confuse us so there will be four options A, B, C, D and one among the uh, uh, option there will be like more prevalent in whites so we won't notice it much uh, then that will be the answer so all except uh, uh, will be a question uh, in this kind of diseases so more prevalent in blacks this kind of points you should take care the fifth one is autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease AD PKD so what happens here is it is an autosomal dominant disease and uh, the presentation mainly uh, the dominant and recessive two types of uh, polycystic kidney disease are there and in that 
autosomal dominant uh, symptoms will be numerous disparate heterogeneous renal cyst occurring bilaterally and onset in adult life associated with liver cyst so this will be the presentation of adpkd and what happens here is a bilateral renal cyst which are numerous and disparate and heterogeneous and uh, the onset is mainly in the adult life that is very, very important because uh, uh, dominant uh, uh, pkd is uh, onset in uh, adult life and associated with liver cyst so these are the things we should know about idpkd and alkaptonuria that is the sixth one and it is an autosomal recessive disease so here in this uh, condition homogenetic oxidase deficiency is there so that will cause inability to metabolize phenyl alanine and tyrosine so uh, this uh, deficiency which is uh, uh, deficient in uh, each condition you should know thoroughly by uh, continuous revision multiple revisions you should you can buy heart that so alkaptonuria homogenetic oxidase deficiency and uh, it will lead to the inability to metabolize phenyl alanine and tyrosine and it will uh, lead to build up of uh, build up an urinary excretion of homogenetic acid so in alkaptonuria homogenetic acid is excreted or uh, build up in the body so in urine you can see homogenetic acid So the pathology and cardinal symptoms of alkaptonuria urine turns dark and black on standing ochronosis that is dark pigmentation of fibrous and cartilage tissues and ochronotic arthritis cardiac valve involvement so diseases is generally uh, disease is generally benign this alkaptonuria is generally benign and the main presentation is urine dark and black on standing and ochronosis ochronosis so these are the things cardiac valve involvement or chronotic arthritis hemophilia a factor 8 deficiency the clotting factor deficiencies are very very important you can see hemophilia a hemophilia b von willebrand disease so, so many uh, important diseases are there in that so uh, you should know hemophilia a what happens there pathogenesis X-linked recessive disease. It is an X-linked recessive disease, and factor eight deficiency is there in this disease. So hemophilia A for eight, A for eight. You can think like that. And uh, hemophilia A, we will see the cardinal symptoms, the presentation. They are very very important. Hemorrhage, hematuria, hemarthrosis. So the presentation of hemophilia A and B are almost same, and uh, you can see that prolonged prothrombin time. So in hemophilia B, it will be a little more milder than hemophilia A. Uh, so this the presentation are hemorrhage, hematuria, hemarthrosis in uh, hemophilia B also. So you should know the presentation and uh, the severity mild in case of hemophilia B. So prolonged prothrombin time. So this is the presentation and uh, eight one von Willebrand disease again a clotting factor deficiency. So von Willebrand disease is an autosomal dominant and recessive varieties are there in this disease so what happens is von willebrand factor deficiency and it will uh, ha make a defect in initial formation of platelet plug so platelet plug and shorter half life of factor 8 in blood this von willebrand deficiency will lead to the defect in initial formation of platelet plugs and shorter half life of factor 8 in blood and this is a very very important one and you can see the cardinal symptoms of the presentations are hemorrhage similar to hemophilia so in case of uh, hemophilia what we have seen hematrosis uh, hemorrhage uh, like that uh, here in von willebrand disease similar to hemophilia we can see the hemorrhage and in the type 1 it is most milder one von willebrand uh, factor deficiency or type 1 is mild most mild and type 2 is intermediate and type 3 is most severe with recessive inheritance so complete absence of the von Willebrand factor will be there and here it is a recessive inheritance and it is the most severe type. Ninth one, Neiman pick lipidosis. So Neiman pick lipidosis is an autosomal recessive condition 
and here what happens is sphingomyelinase deficiency this is very very important sphingomyelinase so in Neyman pick lipidosis sphingomyelinase deficiency will be there and accumulation of sphingomyelin in phagocytes so accumulation of phagocytes in uh, accumulation of uh, sphingomyelin in phagocytes uh, occurs in Neyman pick lipidosis and uh, it is very very important the cardinal symptoms of the pathology if you see they are uh, very interesting sphingomyelin containing foamy histiocytes this you have to register in your mind because they will be asking foamy histiocytes uh, in reticular endothelial system is uh, found in which condition so Neyman pick lipidosis you should know the pathology sphingomyelin is deficiency and what happens is sphingomyelin containing foamy histiocytes in reticular endothelial system and uh, spleen also so hepatosplenomegaly anemia fever sometimes cns deterioration so this will be the cardinal symptoms and the presentation hepatosplenomegaly anemia fever sometimes cns deterioration so death by age 3 this is also very important point death by age 3 The tenth one, maple syrup urine disease. We have seen uh, MCQ regarding this in the beginning. So autosomal recessive condition. And what happens in maple syrup urine disease? It's very interesting uh, by the name itself, maple syrup urine. So deficiency of branched chain keto acid decarboxylase. So deficiency of branched chain keto acid decarboxylase. And what happens is no degradation of branched chain amino acids so there is no degradation of branched chain amino acids and it will lead to build up of isoleucine valine and leucine we have seen this in the mcq as options build up of isoleucine valine and leucine the presentation of maple syrup urine disease will be like severe cns defects mental retardation and death and person smell smells like maple syrup or burned sugar so person smells like maple syrup or burned sugar so this will be the presentation and MCQ will see once again in maple syrup urine diseases disease the amino acids excreted in the urine are leucine isoleucine valine all of the answer is all of the above so isoleucine leucine and valine maple syrup urine disease the amino acids excreted in urine so this is all about uh, the genetic disorders uh, part 3 and 5th episode of AAP, GT and UPSC revision series. Uh, we hope that these uh, videos are helping our viewers. Please share with your friends and uh, this uh, genetic disorders part 3, uh, we have, uh, uh, in these 3 parts we have covered uh, 30 diseases where, which are very very important few more diseases in the genetic uh, disorders we will cover in the next video so uh, thank you for watching and uh, you can give your feedbacks and suggestions in the comment box and uh, if you have any request for any videos which are difficult for you to make notes and study we will try to do that and uh, all the best wishes for coming exams uh, and stay tuned and uh, enable the bell icon for getting all the notifications thank you once again